on our Facebook. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Hi. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. Uh, wherever you are. I always get a little bit of behind the scenes because uh, we took uh, at least three different tests today to see that the system is working because last time it wasn't working. And um, I think we are on air, so that's good. I would like to introduce you to uh, my team members, Leah, who is one of the managers on our team, and she looks after making sure that the information gets to you uh, on time and in different formats. And then it's Tamara, and Tamara is one of our customer service team members uh, who um, answers questions, uh, emails, um, and we have about seven people now doing that. And we do that for free as a service that we offer you to our community. Uh, we answer questions of anyone, even if you don't uh, purchase our products and supplements, uh, we don't make it a dividing factor. We know that many of you want to learn how to keep your dog healthy. And uh, that's why we are here. It makes me really happy that, that we are able to pitch in a little bit and hopefully prevent problems um, and uh, issues in your dog's life. Now, I am going to be talking about mobility today, but mobility of the acute kind and acute injuries, because I know that as soon as I say mobility, there will be many of you uh, waiting or asking questions about your senior dog's arthritis and uh, how to prevent it and how to make your dog young again. Now. I have something to say about that. Uh, we are exploring the possibilities of, of doing some studies. So it's some of the promising substances that are being researched in human medicine. And you will get an opportunity to register for um, uh, such studies. Uh, we will be choosing obviously a limited number of people, but we would like to know if you're interested and if it's something that we should be even considering. So first, I would like uh, to uh, pass the talking stick over to Leah and Tamara to say hi. Hi, everyone. It's great being here. Thank you, Peter. <laughs> hello, hello. And uh, is Tamara there? I can't see her. I think that we um, lost Tamara. Uh, Tamara, are you on camera? One second here. Oh, nice. Am I there? Okay. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Tamara, and I work in the customer care, like Peter said, and I answer emails, phone calls, and help with social media. So nice to see you. Um, our goal, thank you, Tamara. Thank you, Leah. Our goal is for you to, know, uh, to meet uh, more team members as we progress in these uh, live broadcasts. I have kind of a mixed feeling about live broadcasts because I, I love them and um, I don't because I had to get used to being on the camera and it is not easy, but I'm starting to enjoy it because I know how much difference it makes. And if I see that something makes difference, I'm willing to overcome some hesitations. Anyway, I, uh, as I said, we are gonna be talking about acute mobility and we will address um, several different areas. Uh, first, I will talk about how to prevent injuries. I'll show you actually a few videos and photos and how to prevent injuries. And then the second part will be how to address them and how to address them without the use of drugs. And I have Mr. Paxi Maxi coming to visit. Paxi, come on. He likes to chase butterflies, you guys. I have to show you how hot he is now. Come on, come on, Paxi. Oh, oh my goodness. Yesterday, he's such a cuddle bug. Oh. I'll show you actually a video in a moment. Why are you panty? Have you been running and chasing butterflies, little monkey? Little monkey. <laughs> um, you know, it's so nice to have a young dog, but I also know what it feels like to have an older dog because Sky was 16 when he passed away. And Tamara just recently lost her beloved dog and Leah has a middle-aged dog. So we have all different groups here. And I know how nice it is to actually have a healthy dog. And I'm determined to um, not only increase lifespan of your dogs, and that's what I try to do when we work because I know what it is to what it is like to lose dogs, but also increase the health span, meaning 
you know, look at human medicine. We have been able to maybe extend lifespan for some time, but the last 10 or 20 years of many people are years of pain and discomfort and suffering and not really good quality of life. And this is something that uh, we really need to acknowledge in medicine because it's, you know, it doesn't really make sense for us to live longer when the quality of life is, is not really good. And the same applies to dogs. Um, I will share a few videos with you because I kind of wanted to see what I mean by, by um, you know, I think that the moments that we experience with our dogs are the most important parts of enjoying them, right? Like the moments of connection and, and fun and the adventures that we take them on, all that is a conditional, a conditional situation to them being healthy. If they're not healthy and mobile, we can't do anything with them. So I prepared a few little videos here. I'm going to share a screen with you. Um, and it will be a little, maybe a little funny because I'm just gonna, just a second. Okay, I'm just gonna try my best. Okay, so this is, um, this is actually the first video and I recorded it last night. Some of you may have seen it and uh, it's Pax um, and I having a cuddle moment. And I would like that to be, and the kind of comfort and the kind of real relaxed feeling true for our senior dogs as well, when they are not achy, when they're not um, in discomfort, right? He so I'm just gonna dinner, play this for you. Dessert, I'm just going to... And now we are having a <laughs> <laughs> so this is a dog Somebody that obviously like is not in pain. This is a dog that is relaxed and inflammation free, even though I already learned at an 11 month old dog that injuries can happen to any dog. The, the, the bizarre thing is how quickly they, not bizarre, but the beautiful part is how quickly they recover. And I would like to talk to you about why as well. Um, I've had two big teachers in, um, um, in the learning about mobility and injuries. Uh, one of them was my horse, Alpha, and believe it or not, this is me with hair. And Alpha was a horse, I'm saying was, because she, she was born in 1973. That would make her, I don't know, 50 years old or 47 years old, that would be really old. Um, she was born in 1973 and she had major tendonitis. And um, I used to, obviously I lived in the Eastern Bloc or not obviously, but I used to live in the Eastern Bloc and we had very cheap riding clubs. Like everyone could go, like it would cost me like a dollar every six months to ride every day or as much as I wanted to. And so that was one of the perks of uh, living behind the Iron Curtain, even though I'm not really <laughs> advocating communism, but not everything was bad. And, and horses were part of the, the it was part of the good kind of um, life there. So we used to go and, um, and Alpha, Alpha was, um, was, had tendonitis and it was very difficult to see her limp, even as a, as a young horse. And that kind of affected my whole life by trying to figure out how to prevent injuries and how to prevent use of drugs or aggressive surgeries. Obviously, Sky, and he's on the right side here. He's always been on the right side. <laughs> um, he uh, was my biggest teacher on many levels. He taught me how to treat some of the internal conditions, uh, diarrhea and digestive issues. And he also uh, allowed me to experience how to deal with um, aging dogs and, and how difficult it is to um, see them age and how difficult it is to see anyone age, including our parents and our friends and ourselves. You know, have you, have you had that feeling sometimes where you kind of don't see someone for 10 years and then you see them go, oh my God, like they've changed, right? And it actually happens to all of us. And I look at some of my pictures and I go, you know, but but there are ways of um, improving our our health and and um, longevity, and that's what I'd like to dedicate our not only today's talk to, but also the, the the future years of my work. 
So Alpha and uh, Sky were big teachers for me. And you know, as I said, without injuries, we can experience all these different adventures with our dogs. And I'm, I'm crazy when it comes to having ideas what to do with our dogs. When Sky was middle aged, I thought, wouldn't it be great if I, if I could take him to Paris and do down dog under Eiffel Tower and make him run around the pyramids at Louvre and uh, then take him to my hometown and do all that stuff. Um, I was very lucky and lucky that I'm a sleepwalker and I sleepwalked through glass door when I was in my early 20s to the point where I cut one of my major arteries and I almost died. This allowed me to have a service dog for my sleepwalking and travel with my service dog. So, you know, Sky is actually, Sky was um, certified as a service dog and Pax is just going through the training. Uh, we work with an organization in Europe, in the Czech Republic, because I spent quite a bit of time there with my mother and uh, it, was, it was a good way to go. But anyway, traveling was relatively easy for Sky and I. And I took him to Paris. And mobility is actually, allowed me to, and Sky's mobility allowed me to do this, all this fun stuff. So yoga is super important in my life. And it's one of the ways of, um, of enhancing your, your blood flow and your health and uh, your mindset as well. Dogs can do yoga, but you can actually be very mindful with their exercise and prevent injuries as well. And it doesn't necessarily mean that injuries do not happen. Um, just last year, I was moving some furniture and put my back out and, and that it took me quite a, quite a bit of time, maybe two, three weeks to actually recover. But I recovered and I'm, I'm fine. And, and uh, when you actually really look after the preventive steps, then you can prevent injuries. You know, may, many people say, my dog was absolutely fine for five years and suddenly he slipped and he put his, you know, he tore his ligament. There's so many different occasions before then when the acute injury doesn't happen, but the tissue degeneration and deterioration does happen. And that's something that we need to keep in mind because if we don't, we actually fail to prevent these injuries or fail to delay them because eventually they, they may happen no matter what we do. So, you know, when Sky got older um, and he wasn't as willing to run like a crazy maniac. Uh, I used to take him to the park and do yoga with, uh, with him. And this is his yoga pose that's called Shavasana. And that's my pose. And I think that it's called Tamara. Is it called crow pose? I can't remember. <laughs> it's okay. Yes, a crow pose. Is it? Yes. There you go. As if it mattered. But anyway, so this is something that, uh, that I wanted to share with you before we start talking the practical uh, talking about the practical parts of prevention of injury and um, and uh, how to deal with them. All right. Uh, so um, the you know the mo mobility. What is mobility? Mobility is good mobility and and injury free body um, is conditional to several conditions. One, the body's biochemistry has to be okay because the muscles would not be moving if there weren't certain electrolytes and certain micro elements and nutrients and certain um, vitamins and proteins, amino acids, omega oils, the body would not be able to move well. So the building blocks have to be there. I have this, um, I, I, I often say that there's like 37 billion, thousand, billion, billion, trillion, trillion, or billion, billion, anyway, 37 with 21 zeros, I always forget, of chemical reactions happening in the body every second. And when these reactions happen with flaws, because there's not enough nutrients, then injuries will happen because there's lack of repair, there is lack of proper function in the cells. I said repair because uh, injuries happen when the body is incapable. Either it goes through trauma when, when the cells, the muscle cells or joint cells or cells of the body go through sudden death or sudden injury and release of inflammatory factors and they can't function. Then, you know, you injure your muscle, you tear your muscle. Obviously, there is a loss of function. 
But injuries also happen when there is lack of repair, because as I said, with the ligament, uh, there are micro injuries and micro trauma and micro problems in the body happening before then. And if the body, the cells cannot repair, then suddenly it leads to a bigger injury. That, that is suddenly uh, uh, obvious. Cell repair is very closely linked to DNA repair. Imagine if the cell gets damaged, then the, the cell either has to multiply and the D DNA has to divide, or the cell has an ability to repair and restore to a degree. But as we age and as time progresses, and we all know it, um, we lose the ability to repair. And the last and third condition is um, external factors and physical factors. Um, if you have a dog that goes crazy and jumps three feet or 10 feet high to catch Frisbee for three years, there will be external um, factor playing a role with an injury. One-sided injury, um, you know, physical stress, um, excessive, um, excessive uh, stress on the body and the muscles and the joints uh, will generate injury as well and lack of repair and lack of building blocks. So you can see how everything kind of ties together. Now the building blocks, I talk about them a lot um, and I will not be telling you much today because you can go to our website and you can check what essential nutrients I give to my dog and I take and I suggest to you. Now, what I'd like to talk about is um, uh, how to prevent injuries, number one. Number two, how to treat acute injuries. And number three, I would like to inquire if you would like to uh, be part of the study, uh, mobility and anti-aging study. Uh, so injury prevention. Um, I would like to share one more, one more video with you. I... I'll do my best again. <laughs> I'm not terribly techni technically challenged for my generation, just a little bit. <laughs> okay, so this is PAX about a month ago. And, um, you know, everyone wants to record a video of their dog running on the beach. And I'm crazy enough to make it happen. But we had to come to one a really difficult decision. I had to actually limit Pax's time at the beach because if I take him to the beach, he will do this until he drops and he will do this until he injures. And I'll show you why. This is actually the fast version or regular version. Right, and then if you see that, that he's gonna do that 30 times or 50 times in a, in a walk, He's going to not only overheat and stress his body, stress his system. And I'm just going to re replay again. He's going to uh, possibly make some of the tissues and the cells burst and inflame and, and, and you know, he's going to start limping. And that's exactly what actually happened. That suddenly I see him lifting his leg. And the first time I saw that was when I took him we were up in Whistler um, some time ago and he was really enjoying the snow and I was taking him to uh, cross country ski and suddenly I have a limpy dog. And then the second time it happened at the beach. Those are the times when we really have to be mindful and do not believe that dogs have a better idea what is good for them. You know, I love watching these videos online where dogs do tricks and jump 10 feet high and, um, and, and, you know, do whatever, Cirque du Soleil kind of stuff. But we have to acknowledge that uh, our dogs have not been built for these uh, tricks um, in a severe kind of uh, intense mode. They are not. They would roam, they would hunt, they would run and sprint for 30 seconds chasing the rabbits, they would play, but they would not be doing that for half an hour or 45 minutes. One of them is that they just wouldn't get an opportunity. Number two, we bred dogs to become obsessive compulsive like border collies or other dogs, right? So we kind of bred um, this kind of tendency to injury. What do we do when our dogs start limping? 
um, we need to address the biochemistry. We need to allow the body to repair and we need to um, affect the external environment and the physical conditions. Some people say, you know, it's all in the genes and some dogs are, have, are prone to hip dysplasia and uh, injuries and some dogs aren't. That is not true because it's proven by science that a large majority of um, the gene expression is dependent on so-called epigenetics. The external factor, biochemical factor, external physical factor, all that affects our body. You know, if you eat well and if you don't smoke and if you have history of cancer, lung cancer in the family, it does not necessarily mean that you're going to get lung cancer. You're going to be able to reduce these chances uh, because you have about three quarters of control over your genes by how we act and how, how we eat and exercise and what we do. Um, so avoiding the stress on joints and muscles is super important from early age. Now, the good news is that, you know, I've done a few, I've taken a few steps with Pax, rest him and given him some um, uh, supplements and ingredients that I'll talk to you about later. And he recovered, no problem. But if we ignore these messages from the body, uh, they will not recover and they will start being injured more and more often until it leads to immobility at the age of six or eight. And I've seen that and it drives me crazy. I would have some friends or people that I know um, really running their dogs hard behind the bike or at the beach, uh, throwing the frisbee or the ball for hours or an end. And when I warn them uh, out of good intention, sometimes they get even pissed off with me to mind my own business. And then a few months later or years later, I see them with their dog in a, in, on the wheels, right? Or I see their dog not being able to move and it breaks my heart. That's why I am here to help you. So avoid excessive exercise. And Tamara will be very happy to post a link to um, healthy exercise article. Tamara, are you there? Tamara is probably muted. <laughs> and she's looking- I'm here, button. yes. Tamara, how often do you find people um, uh, exercising their dogs incorrectly or even arguing with you um, that it's all good, it's fine to, to run them hard? I just think that a lot of people don't quite understand um, that maybe they're, they're causing injury without realizing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a really good point. And, you know, I, I must say that most people don't do it intentionally. Obviously, I would say almost all. Some of them like to be righteous. They don't know what to do. But mainly the problem is we don't know what we don't know. And then we make mistakes. I make mistakes because I don't know what I don't know. I'm sure that in 10, 20 years, I will be, I will be really frustrated over the lack of knowledge that I had 10 years back or 20 years back. But anyway, all we can do is to learn, and that's why we are here. So focus on a variety of exercise. Make sure that your dog um, um, exercises in a varied way. Try to kind of think of what wolves do, would do in nature. They would roam, they would hike, they would, well, they wouldn't hike, they would just roam. Uh, they would jog a little bit, they would play, uh, and they would have a variety of healthy exercise. They would not be chasing 30 bunnies in 30 minutes. That would not happen. And they would rest as well. So rest is important. So too much or too little exercise can be harmful. Um, they say that a uh, healthy amount of stress is good on our body. So if, you, if your idea is to lie on a beach bed somewhere in a tropical paradise with your dog beside you, that's probably the worst and the most harmful thing to do because there will be no stress. Um, I find it sometimes funny that that's people's dream of life, right? To be on the beach and lying on the beach. <laughs> it is harmful. So if you're not at the beach, don't feel sad. Um, I also wanted to say that, you know, we are dealing with the COVID-19 crisis and I don't mean to ignore it, but there is a point where we need to start kind of taking advantage of the time we have and learn. And uh, I hope that uh, most of you or all of you are safe and well, but if you're not, I hope you, I hope you recover fast and 
and that you will be able to do all all those fun parts and fun stuff that, that you like to do. Anyway, going back to the injury, so too much or too little can be harmful. Um, the one of the most common causes of uh, front end injuries, and you know, it starts with shoulders and ends up with paws and uh, lameness, is actually um, our neck injuries. Um, I talk about neck injuries quite a bit in connection with collars. Um, many people have uh, collars and then a retractable leash on it. It's like you're doing a chiro adjustment without knowing what you're doing with the leash and the, and, and the, and the collar every, every time you press that brake or every time your dog gets at the end of the leash. And you know what? Stop arguing with me that collars are okay. I just don't want to hear these arguments. If you do have that idea that, that collars are okay and depends how you use them or whether we are trained to use them, accidents happen all the time. If you sit in your car and drive without a seatbelt, it is your challenge, your problem. But I do think that collars are harmful, that they actually cause neck injuries, they cause decrease of energy flow in the shoulders, in the front extremities. Many dogs start limping. We blame it on just them jumping or suddenly stepping wrong. It is not true. Once again, if you see those anatomical pictures of, um, of neck and how many important nerves and blood vessels it has, it comes without saying that it's the wrong idea to put collars on your dog. I've tried to use harnesses, tried to use some sort of other restraint devices. It took me about 10 years to find um, perfect fit harness that we carry for uh, a British company that, um, that allowed us to sell it in North America. So we're really lucky to have those harnesses. I used to use collar with Sky because he never pulled, but now when I put a collar on packs, it looks so weird and it feels so weird. Like I've never had a, a leash on a collar on packs. I always put a harness on. And it tells you that I, I really mean this. And I've, I've, I've been in practice for 30 years. It's, it's one of the most serious problems that we have. So avoid retractable leashes and attach a leash uh, to a harness, uh, especially if you have a dog that pulls. But in any case, your dog may want to say hi to another dog and that will be problem. Or, you know, uh, there's suddenly some sort of sudden noise and your dog will, will, um, will uh, lunge and, and, and jump. Um, those, those things happen. Many dogs lick their paws, uh, they're treated for allergies. I know now from my experience that uh, a large majority of these dogs actually have nerve injuries from, from collars as well. Tamara will post you a link to um, neck injury article and she will also post a link to uh, the harness uh, page. Ah, so um, body weight, obviously, dogs should not be overweight. I see still dogs that are overweight, and the main reason is that we feed them species inappropriate food. Um, I call overfeeding monkey love. You know, there is a story from our family. Um, my sister and I, we used to go and visit our grandma, and our grandma was... Uh, very good to us. And when we decided not to eat a dinner, she would give us candies. And my, my father discovered this candy habit. And he had a chat with my grandma and he basically said that it's monkey love and that it's not real love. Because if you do something that is harmful, even though you do it for love, it's not true love. So uh, overfeeding your dog uh, just because he or she's asking is actually monkey love. And you know, I hope that there are not too many people practicing monkey love, but if you do, be kind to yourself. It's not the end of the world, but remember that keeping your dog in good shape is actually the best way to go. If you're asking how to do that, it's really simple. You go to your recipe maker and use natural cooked or raw diet recipes. And if you say that it takes too much time or it's too expensive, it is not true. It doesn't take too much time. I've been doing that, I'm a busy person. And it's not too expensive because when you add kibble plus vet bills, it is much more expensive. Plus, I don't want your dog to be just about finances. I know that you, you love him or her. So let's, uh, let's make some corrections there. Um, energy flow in the body. Uh, the spine is very much instrumental to injuries. 
I've seen many dogs that have lumbar injuries, um, have also tendency to ligament injuries, especially cruciate ligament injuries. You know, if there is incre decreased energy flow because there is some sort of nerve impingement due to tight muscles or uh, back pain, back discomfort, those nerves lead to the muscles on the leg and they become weak and they become dysfunctional. And that's how ligaments and joints start suffering because there's enough, there, there's loss of stability. Um, also lack of blood, blood flow from these areas from the lumbar segment will affect your ligaments. So, <coughs> excuse me, I'm choking. No COVID here. <coughs> it was just a cough. Sorry, I don't mean to joke, but I sometimes humor helps us to overcome difficult uh, times. Um, so anyway, what I wanted to say is that um, that some people say, oh, my dog just suddenly slipped and that's why it happened. It never happens like that. It's gradual lack of, uh, lack of um, repair, uh, lack of building blocks, uh, inflammation, chronic inflammation. The same happens with your knees or your back or whatever it is. I noticed that my body doesn't repair as fast as I used to with injuries. So, you know, nutrients uh, are super important and I'll talk about them later. But remember that spine, 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 healthy spine is super important for healthy extremities and prevention of injuries. Um, how do you recognize that your dog has an injury? You know, sometimes it is just because uh, they lend and that's easy. But oftentimes uh, they scratch her too. Many dogs are treated for skin problems and allergies because they chew in certain area of their body. People forget that dogs cannot scratch other than, well, they scratch, but they, they, you know, they, they cannot tell you that they're in pain. Uh, that's what I wanted to say. They will scratch or chew certain area, and then they will traumatize a certain area of the skin because there is, under, there is an underlying muscle that is tight and uh, they cause skin problems. So there's, they're being treated for skin problems while the muscle injury is a problem, right? Uh, I see Pax when he, um, when he goes to the beach and when he overdoes it, he suddenly starts um, chewing and nibbling in certain muscle groups. So I do massage and I know that I've overdone it with him because remember, he's an obsessive border collie that was bred to be obsessive and not to care about his body and physical health. Um, so injuries, um, are usually happen when there is lack of blood flow, lack of nerve function, uh, lack of building blocks, lack of repair on the cell and DNA level. Remember scratching. If your dog is scratching, it may not be because of a skin problem. Obviously, he or she may have fleas, but it often is because there are some injuries. Injuries that may not necessarily cause lameness, but they will... Um, they will cause discomfort and your dogs will have to let you know. So how do you um, deal with injuries? How do you deal with um, repair without drugs? And I'm saying without drugs because drugs uh, come with side effects. I have a certain uh, very simple step-by-step -step approach when Pax gets injured or when I get injured. First, I find the right allies. And some of them, some of the allies in my arsenal are chiropractors, physiotherapists, acupuncture therapists, homeopathy, um, intramuscular needle stimulation, which is a form of uh, acupuncture that is kind of, you know, re that relaxes the muscles. It's targeting the muscle fibers. And then massage and hydrotherapy. Um, the other thing that I like to address is the external factors, obviously the exercise and levels of exercise and also toxins, because I said that uh, some portion and they say around 15, 20% of um, our tendencies are in genetics and the rest is epigenetics, the external factors in biochemistry. So detoxing, making sure that your body is not burdened with toxins because toxins mean lack of uh, capacity for repair. If you have toxicity in the body, the body will try to remove the toxins. It will not have um, as much capacity to repair. It's almost like you want to keep your kitchen spotless, but there is a leak in the basement. You will probably not be cleaning the kitchen. You'll be dealing with the leak in the basement. Uh, toxins lead to dysfunction and inflammation. Remember, 37 uh, the 21 zeros chemical reactions happen in the body every second. Also, the liver produces uh, 
uh, you know, biochemical factors and molecules that are important in movement. Um, some minerals are important for movement as well. And minerals also push out um, toxins from the body. That's why I'm so um, keen on supplementing uh, mineral supplements uh, like green mint because uh, they do help us to uh, eliminate toxins. What do conventional drugs do? And I will talk about um, conventional drugs for a moment and then I will give you some suggestions for replacement of these drugs. Conventional drugs are chemicals that are foreign to the body. And that's why we should use them with caution. They also put our healing ability to sleep. Now, if I told you that every time you injure yourself or your dog gets injured and you take an anti-inflammatory medication, you reduce the repair ability and you reduce the normal healing response of the body, would you take them? Probably not. But we in medicine have uh, so focused on uh, reducing the pain, reducing the inflammation. We are not even asking why they're there because healthy inflammatory response, even with the inflammation and the pain will stop us to move excessively and will initiate and trigger a healing response. So the inflammation with the increased blood vessel flow and increased cell presence like white blood cells and, and, and healing of the, of the tissue, inflammation is part of it. And if we block it, we actually block the healing. So we block the healing, we reduce the repair, and we will actually move more because we don't feel pain. And eventually we'll start actually the chain reaction to very chronic irreparable damage. So short-term inflammation is actually not a bad thing. And I am strongly against anti-inflammatory drugs. I have not taken one single ibuprofen or NSAID of any kind as long as I remember. I think that the last time it was prescribed by my dentist, maybe about 25 years ago, 30 years ago. Since then, I learned better. And I will not take chances to cause these side effects, to have delayed healing, and uh, also um, risk the liver and kidney health. Uh, many of the senior dogs that get put on NSAIDs, um, Metacam and other drugs, actually get uh, kidney disease. And it also affects their liver. I would have a healthy dog going to for dental procedure and I would put in the file, do you know these NSAIDs and the dentist would ignore my request and the dog would come back with full blown acute kidney failure. It is no fun to see that. And I will dedicate a big chunk of my life and, and teaching to kind of prevent you from using these drugs if I can convince you not to use them because they're not good. But the reason why they're used, they can be licensed and um, we now know that drug companies have, have a license for a certain amount of uh, years, number of years for drug, but now they change the formula a little bit so they can license it for a little longer. And there are some people who actually try to introduce legislature that will not allow these changes and that will not allow the licensing of these drugs forever because it, you know, some of the simple drugs are not even available because of the system that we live in. But going back to NSAIDs, I would not, I would not be using them. I would never use them on PAX and I never use them on, on Sky and I never use them myself. Um, drugs are, they bring another issue, right? Like he addressed one issue that is, let's say discomfort, but he caused other problems. It's almost like saying, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna trade the wing of an airplane for an engine. That would not work, right? So you cannot do this, these trade-offs trade -offs to damage one, one area to help your dog to be more comfortable for a limited amount of time. But the good news is that there are some natural substances that can be as effective as, um, as drugs. Um, before then, uh, and I'm going to give you an opportunity to ask some questions. Um, um, Please spare, uh, spare them. Uh, make sure that you make a note if you have any questions. Uh, there is another group of drugs which are steroids, uh, corticosteroids, such as prednisone or prednisolone or dexamethasone. They're sometimes used in dogs to reduce inflammation. Uh, I compare them to a sleeping pill at the time your house catches on fire. I hope it's never going to happen, but if your house caught on fire, and your neighbor came to help you and gave you a sleeping pill, 
that's the equivalent of steroid repair. It basically puts the immune system to totally to sleep, uh, the healing responses to sleep, and they're not the solution. Plus, they cause serious long-term side effects. Instead, I have learned to, um, to use uh, kind of like a step-by-step -step approach. And I'm going to share a screen here because um, I think that you may want to have a visual for that. Uh, let me just um, start the screen sharing again. Um, you know, I stopped caring about what people think and what people say, and I just do and use what works and what I've seen work. I have uh, been not only a licensed veterinarian for more than 30 years, scary thought, but I also have background in um, animal homeopathy. Um, and I have seen homeopathy really be valuable in injuries, but also chronic conditions. I published a long time ago, I published a study on uh, feline hyperthyroidism, which is a condition uh, that also affects people. And in that study, 50% of these cats uh, recovered from very serious and fatal condition if not treated. I had 50% of these cats recovering with no other drugs. One of them was my cat that was diagnosed when she was seven. And when I gave her, started giving her homeopathic remedies, she recovered and uh, only had high hormone a few times in her lifetime. She died at the age of 21 and had no signs of hyperthyroidism, which was mind blowing. So going back to mobility, Arnica is really helpful and Arnica and high potencies for acute injuries. And remember, we are not talking long-term chronic conditions like arthritis in older dogs today. We're talking how to address acute injuries. Arnica 1M, um, depending on what potency you have, you can also do 200C. 1M is my preferred potency, and I would give it, you know, three times a day for the first two, three days, and then uh, maybe stop if your dog is doing well. You can, you don't need to uh, administer Arnica if the condition resolves, okay? If the condition resolves after first few doses, you just stop. Where do you find homeopathic remedies? I like to use um, a company he called Helios in the United Kingdom, and also Hahnemann Pharmacy is another uh, reputable pharmacy. Uh, did I say Helios? And I think that it is Helios.uk. Yeah, Helios, Boron, and Hahnemann Pharmacy. I prefer Helios, but Hahnemann is my second choice, and Boron is my, my third choice. Um, so Arnica is one thing and start giving it right away. And that's what I do with PAX. That's what I do with myself if I have an injury. Um, now I try to page down here. Ice and rest. Um, rest is my preferred choice. I still am not totally, <laughs> totally sold on icing because it does decrease blood circulation. And I have a feeling that nature knows better. So I'm, you know, I usually don't ice. Some people ice, some people may find it helpful. So be kind of cautious about the ice. Um, try it, see whether it works, whether it doesn't. Make yourself a guinea pig because you start trying it on your dogs. Uh, we could do a trial, right? Icing, not icing. We could do so much research. Uh, that's why I'm always struggling thinking, you know, I should just kind of stop everything and do research. But that would not help in many other areas. So rest is really important. Ice, maybe, maybe not. Um, EPA, DHA, are, uh, especially EPA, are, is omega-3 that is uh, abundant in fish oil, krill oil, some algae oils, and calamari oil. You may be able to learn on the pages of Feel Good Omega why I don't use fish oil, krill oil, and algae oil. Uh, it's a long story, but short, uh, give you a short version. It is either unsafe due to heavy metals or unsustainable because of overfishing or GMO organisms in algae and uh, plant-based oils. So calamari is sustainable oil. It took us two years to actually decide what use to use, what oil to use. And I'm really happy with uh, the effect. I usually double or triple doses of Feel Good Omega for Pax or myself when there is an injury. And you know, the, the snow injury that Pax had, I didn't have my homeopathic remedies. I just he was non-weight bearing for one day. And I gave him feel good omega um, 
three times, uh, triple dose, and the next day he was not limping at all. And I could not believe it, actually. It was where my kind of belief system is challenged when I see the, the very strong, good recovery. But there's also one element that you must not forget. Pax is 11 months old. He's uh, young. He's you know, vital. He can repair much faster than the old dogs like me. Um, but EPA and, um, and omega-3s in general are very, very important. Turmeric. Um, I do have actually turmeric here. This is what turmeric looks like um, in the natural form. You could uh, grind turmeric in your dog's food or you can use turmeric containing supplements. Um, I do like the fresh one. Um, I also added turmeric in soul food, which is our certified organic whole food multivitamin. And um, the reason for that is when I was making the multivitamin formula, I wanted to create a supplement that addresses certain organ issues or injuries or even cancer by adding some of these ingredients in reasonable amounts, not necessarily have a strong medicinal effect, but having the small doses over the time will actually help to prevent injuries, inflammation, cancer, and others. It should support those. I can't say that it does that. I only can say that it supports that according to the regulations. <laughs> um, anyway, the doses, uh, Tamara, can you tell us the doses uh, verbally? I have it on the slide here, but it actually is showing a little funky. Sure, just one moment here. Um, doses of turmeric. So an eighth to a quarter teaspoon per 10 pounds of body weight. So mixing the powder or root form crushed into your dog's food. And it would be powder when it comes to the one eighth to one quarter. And otherwise it's about 15 to 20 milligrams per kilograms of kilogram, kilogram of turmeric. Now, the beautiful part is that it actually acts on the same receptors as NSAIDs on the drugs, but it does not, I have not seen the side effects and it is a whole food component. And I always love to go for whole food. Some of them, so, sorry, some of them, some of you, some of them, some of you may ask, how about golden paste? Is it actually a good idea to give golden paste, which is a combination of coconut oil, turmeric and pepper? Um, I don't really like giving coconut oil on long-term basis. And uh, maybe I'm just biased, but I've seen a few dogs in my practice that were on coconut oil long-term and they had elevated pancreatic enzymes. I know that coconut oil has been the hype or used to be the hype, I don't know. I personally do not like giving excessive amounts of any food that um, in concentrated amounts. Like I just don't really think that it's a good idea. Um, take it or leave it. I, um, you know, I, I think that um, it's just not justified. Now, the next slide, I'm, I'm having a little bit of a challenge to page down the slides. I have no idea why. <laughs> uh, green nymph muscle. Green nymph muscle is, um, is uh, a very good uh, whole food component. It is used for help with arthritis. It also helps rebuilding cartilage and it acts as an inflammation, anti-inflammatory. It um, neutralizes arachidonic acid and arachidonic acid is the acid that causes inflammation and is part of the inflammatory process. It neutralizes it. It's whole food, it's sustainable, and the effect on inflammation and injuries is moderate based on research. I know that many of you want me to talk about CBD and <laughs> I'm still undecided to be honest. I tried CBD. I have not seen it work as well as I hope for, but I would be willing to stay open, stay open-minded. And we may be using CBD in some of our studies down the road. Um, it may be promising, but I'm not 100% certain that it works. And I think that one of the problems may be the quality of the sources and that some of the supplements that are on the market may not contain as much CBD as uh, we'd like to believe. So that may be one of the problems. I believe that we do have CBD doses on our website or in our um, FAQ tomorrow. If you can look it up, I can't remember it off the top of my head. Ginger is up. another um, um, whole food that you can actually 
um, grind in your dog's food. And, you know, don't, I would say this, the same doses as, the, as turmeric. It um, can moderately or modestly improve pain response. So if you do add ginger, it will improve pain response or, or discomfort based on research in, in modest uh, amounts or level. I talked about nutrients, you know, we talked about, we now talked mainly about chiropractic and physio and, and, and reducing exercise and uh, adding some of the therapeutics, therapeutic foods. But the, the, the important part is to provide your dog with building blocks building blocks starting from minerals to uh, vitamins, omega oils, and also probiotics because probiotics help the immune system and the immune system is um, instrumental in tissue repair and healing as well. I am not going to be going about or going on about supplements too much about the essentials, but you can go and look at the fabulous four that I mentioned at the beginning of this talk. And, um, um, it's important for your dogs to have building blocks. The reason why I'm showing you these elephants is, is um, simple. If your dog lived in savanna or in natural environment and the nutrients would be recycling um, as nature intended, you probably would not need to supplement any supplements. But there are two problems. Uh, one, we transport foods in long distances and we don't return the nutrients back to the soil. So it's not the African savanna and the elephants. Our dogs are withdrawn from the natural cycle. We are withdrawn from the nat natural cycle. Tell me how many times, uh, when you, if you compost, and if you have the compost bin, you store it in a bag and then take a flight to California if you live in Canada and put it in the field where it actually originated from. Never, right? So we interrupted the flow of nutrients and we also overuse soils and abuse them to the degree that they do not have all the minerals and building blocks. So we know that food doesn't contain all the vitamins, all the minerals and the essential oils that it normally would. Um, and our dogs don't roam as free. They sometimes live in the cities. They cannot get the probiotic bacteria that they would normally get unless they supplement their um, probiotics by disgusting habits that I don't want to talk in details about. <laughs> Anyway, so remember that our dogs need nutrients and um, they're not available in food. Um, <clears throat> the traditional joint supplements like glucosamine and chondroitin and MSM, they do have effect to a certain degree. Make sure that you, if you have a moderately or uh, middle-aged dog and older, all those ingredients and all those supplements are actually beneficial. Before I invite you to ask questions, I also would like to invite you to register to our study and also join our community. The study will be in the area of mobility and anti-aging. I've been like a bookworm. I've been studying and reading and reading and studying about mobility and anti-aging. And one of the reasons, I'm going to confess now, one of the reasons why I didn't want this to be a general mobility talk is that we would probably slide into chronic disease and arthritis. <coughs> I'm sorry, this is really not, not a viral cough. I just, um, I just need to have a little drink. We would slide to chronic disease, chronic arthritis, and uh, there's still so much to solve. And I am a perfectionist. If I offer you a solution, even a supplement that would be really good for chronic pain or reducing aging and increasing cell repair and DNA repair, I need to be certain that that actually you will see the results. You may have noticed that all our supplements have five-star rating. And sometimes that's our biggest problem that we don't get enough negative ratings and reviews because you know, it almost looks too good to be true. To be honest, when I look at the supplements, I never expected that the results and the reviews and the reports will be as, as positive. But that made me work even harder to formulate other supplements and products that will deliver the results. 
So going back to chronic disease and arthritis, I have not forgotten about you. I just don't want to give you half as answers or half as good supplements. I need you to get the perfect product, the, the best product there is. And that's why I'm inviting you to the study because we will need your collaboration. Uh, when it comes to mobility and improving aging and slowing down aging and regenerate, improving regeneration, it's gonna take some time. I would like you to also join our community because every time I learn something new, I publish it in our newsletters and you will get exclusive updates and first-hand experience and knowledge. And now I would like uh, Tamara and uh, Leah to help us with questions. I'm going to stop sharing. Oops. I'm going to stop sharing here. And uh, hi, Tamara. And is Leah still there? I don't know. Yes, I am here. Hi. <laughs> I was missing you. <laughs> so if you can, uh, I can see that there are some questions here. And I will just have to read them and go from there. Um, so someone is saying, <laughs> this is a, I love this question. Uh, uh, I'm going to read. I have a four pound chihuahua that will only eat cat food. Is there, is there something I can give her to supplement what she may be missing? I so would love to know the name of uh, this, uh, this dog lover. First, uh, good for you that you're asking and you're, you're trying to find a solution. I will leave it up to you to assess whether there's a little bit of monkey love going on. Because personally, I don't know, I haven't had one single dog that would be healthy and would die of hunger, right? So it's a matter of really, you may be gradually changing the food uh, to a species appropriate food. If you ask me what kibble you should give, I will say there is no kibble I recommend because I don't think that there is any processed food that is good for your dog. The same way I don't know any doctor, medical doctor, who would say that processed food is better for you than fresh food. It's only the veterinary industry that unfortunately got in, in bed with, uh, with pet food companies and they brainwashed us to the point that most of my colleagues positively intended, well-intended believe that kibble is the only thing that we should feed. So going back to what you should feed is homemade cooked or raw diet, depending on how comfortable you feel with raw, feel with raw. but um, gradually start mixing the food and don't be afraid to get your dog hungry. I'll tell you why. Number one, dogs can fast for seven days easily. There is no problem, but even better, there is some scientific evidence that fasting actually improves longevity and extend lifespan because if we get the body into a healthy degree of stress, it activates uh, sirtuins, which are enzymes uh, that um, there are genes actually that um, actually cert, cert, cert genes and sirtuins are enzymes that actually improve longevity. So again, don't be afraid to fast your dog. Put, put food in the bowl, and if he uh, or she does not like it, take it away, try it in the evening. I usually like feeding dogs um, only once a day, again, because of the micro-fasting and, and uh, short periods of fasting. If you start to, uh, looking at micro-fasting in humans, you will also learn that that's good for us. So skipping a breakfast, or giving yourself like 16, 16 hour period of no eating and then eat only eight hours within a day, that's also beneficial. I hope it helps. So, you know, what's missing? Just supplement, uh, give good food and give the, the essentials, give the fabulous four. That, that's my recommendation. That's what I do with Max. Um, uh, there's another question here. Leah, Leah, would you mind reading it actually? So I get a little little break from talking too much. That's why about the toy poodle. Yeah, let me just scroll back up for that one. Um, all right, it says my toy poodle had both back knees operated. Um, I do not ha know how to pronounce a Peter. Is it luxating patella? Yes, luxating patella. Okay, at six months old redone one at six years old and the other at eight years old but was complicated because she completely tore her acl on that knee just before surgery 
She can't walk or play without a short rest and then is limping. I'm worried she partially tore a ligament and arthritis is settling in. Any advice would be helpful. You know, this is one of those things that, uh, that I talked about before, right? Like we are dealing with chronic condition where uh, there have been um, some injuries. Uh, they may stem from uh, tight muscles, genetic predisposition. Uh, small breeds usually have this laxating patella um, more frequently. Uh, you know, micro injuries, all that leads to chronic situations. So all I can say is, Implement the steps that I've suggested. Work with a chiro or physio and massage therapist. Um, I don't really have a magic wound that would actually prevent your dog from being lame and inflamed, except what I just suggested here for the acute treatments. Um, I hope this helps, uh, but you know, um, I, I so hope that we'll be able to prevent these situations from happening by even giving you this uh, presentation. Um, this is a chronic condition and unfortunately uh, you will have to, the resources are very limited and they fall into what I just suggested. Um, that's all. I'm, I'm sorry about your dog sub going through this difficult time. I hope that some of the suggestions that I've made will help. Okay. Um, uh, we have some questions about spondylosis and lumbar discs. The same applies. Chronic conditions, unfortunately, we won't be able to address them. Um, um, somebody's asking what I suggest low, for low plat platelets. Uh, low platelets are not really part of mobility, at least as far as I know, except they're known to be uh, used for stem cells and, um, and uh, you know, um, try to regenerate joints and muscles and injuries. But if there are low platelets, um, I would say nutrition is number one. Detox is number two. Providing the right nutrients is number three. And then recheck. Uh, so Tamara will, I'm sure, post some links on what to do there. Um, <laughs> we have a lot of questions about chronic injuries, you guys. And I so would like to say there is a magic wound that we can, or magic remedy, magic supplement that will help your dog's recovery. You need to basically address, uh, work with your chiropractors, massage therapist, physiotherapist, and give the building blocks, detox, provide the joint supplements that I mentioned, but there is no magic wound. Wound, wound, how do you pronounce it, Leah? My ESL disability. A wand. Wand, wand, a wand. It's W-A-N-D. <laughs> now I learned something every day and I'm 56. Okay, uh, I'm an old dog and I learn new tricks. Um, there are a couple questions about, um, you know, some of the like herbs or things that you mentioned. Uh, Jackie has asked, after a few days on turmeric, I can smell an odd smell on him. It goes away when the turmeric is stopped. I've read this could mean he's sensitive to it. Is this smell normal or what are your thoughts? Um, you know, uh, buy, buy turmeric that you can, if you can buy turmeric in the, in the store, I'm just smelling it. It does have a really funny, almost like a soapy quality of smell. So if that is the case, I would say that it's probably just a uh, harmful, sorry, harmless uh, side effects, a harmless benign side effect. Um, uh, I would not be concerned. Um, um, Someone is asking about uh, the paw limp. Uh, can you read that tomorrow? Perfect timing, got a paw limp. And I'm going, um, it's, you know, I'll, I'll read it if you can find it. And then I'll be going through the questions one by one from that, that point on. Yeah, sorry, um, Peter, I'm, I'm not finding it at the moment. That's okay, I'll read it. Uh, Someone says, perfect timing, got a paw limp. She doesn't care about balls, not impulsive, um, on the fabulous four, 11 years young. In her mind, a puppy, her body a bit older, might be a bit in pain. What kind of herbs, EDC, uh, are good for pain and how much? Arnica might help. Again, the joint supplements that I mentioned um, uh, when I was talking about uh, Perna muscle, turmeric, omega oils, general supplements, uh, all that is helpful. Um, 
just a reminder that, that it's going to be really important for you to pro provide the, the right building blocks to regenerate. As I said, if you do have um, an opportunity to register for a study, I would love that because uh, we are thinking about doing the study mainly for middle-aged and older dogs to improve their regeneration and, uh, and reduce inflammation. So I hope that helps. Um, um, how is it to handle the dog with your harness on a squirrel crazy dog? Really easy, actually. Not difficult, not more difficult than on the collar. And uh, it's simple. You have actually two choices. If your dog is really strong, uh, the perfect fit harness is actually two attachments, one in the front and one in the back. And what I now do, and I wish I could show you, but Pax is somewhere chasing his butterflies. Um, I attach it in the front and then you have an, a choice of attaching another leash to the back and hold two leashes at the same time or thread the, the leash from the front clip to the back clip and just kind of making a double kind of leash. Like I, you know, control my dog with our packs with uh, the two attachments. I may be able to do recording at one point, uh, but anyway, uh, it's really easy to control a squirrel crazy dog on a harness, absolutely easy. And some of the harnesses that we have two widths, one of them are, one of the widths is really almost this wide. I could, uh, again, if I had the harness here, I don't. Uh, but Tamara will post a link to the harness. I can see that you guys are asking about chronic issues and I so would love to have a, a some sort of miraculous remedy. Uh, go through the recording when we finish of this, uh, of this post and, and if you need to, go through the supplements that I mentioned here for acute disease and, and mobility issues, you can also do chronic. Um, but someone is asking about leg braces. I would say that leg braces may be beneficial in some dogs that actually injure crocheted ligaments. I've seen some dogs recovering. Um, that's something that you will need to discuss with your veterinarian. It is not as easy as done as said. Um, uh, he, someone is asking about fatty tissue growths and uh, we have an article about lipomas or fatty tissue growths. I know two things, that they happen in um, the areas or segments of spinal segments that are congested and spastic, number one. And, and, and um, Sky, when he got older, had actually quite a few lipomas. And the other thing is there's some sort of link uh, between um, poor digestion and lipomas. And, and also dogs that get chilly get more lipomas and have poor digestion. So in Chinese medicine, that would be described as lack of digestive fire. Um, you may want to add um, meats and feed meats that are heating and you can go to a recipe maker and the meats have a little label that they're heating or cooling. Poultry, for example, is, is, is heating and give a uh, fear of the cooling meats um, and neutral meats. Number two, um, give digestive enzymes. Number three, address the spinal congestion and work with your chiropractor or acupuncturist on those. Um, Tamara, do you, do you, can you see where I met with the questions here? And if, if not, that's okay. Leah, do you know where I am with the questions? Uh, yes, I believe we are at Connie's question here. Uh, what do you think of green-lipped muscles combined with glucosamine and chondroitin? My female of eight years seems to be responding well. You know, there are, most of the supplements have actually chondroitin, glucosamine, and uh, perna muscle, or some of them. I have a kind of tendency to prefer perna muscle. And I think that it would probably have a very good effect. But some people believe that glucosamine and chondroitin addition is um, beneficial too. I think that combining them is fine. And you're asking about coconut oil, uh, brush teeth with coconut oil. You guys, we are doing mobility and we need to keep a little bit of discipline. <laughs> there is actually a dental care blog and I'm gonna ask Tamara to post it. I'm sorry for not answering all the questions, but I wanted to be focused because last week, actually the reason why I wanna focus is last week we kind of had a free Q 
Q&A question where we answered anything that went and it became a little bit of a chaos. So I just want to stay on topic. Ah, oh, okay. So I'm um, looking at uh, looking at other questions. Tracy Brown um, is asking question, Leah. Uh, yes, at what age should I begin giving glucosamine and chondritin? You know, I was just thinking about it uh, uh, with regards to PACs. And um, I think that some of the studies that would, I would like to make will probably answer that. Um, I'd say you can start as early as you start seeing some signs of um, inflammation or limping, and maybe initially only, you know, temporarily when there's an injury and your dog recovers, then it's fine. Remember that you can also give um, chicken bones, cartilage, um, uh, tracheal um, parts uh, that also have built some building blocks and chondroitin. Um, start giving the whole foods first. And if you see inflammation, definitely by mid middle age, and it's different for different breeds. Uh, five years plus five, six, seven, eight years uh, for sure. And there is another question here. Um, Let's see which one we'll take. Um, you are, there's one, one person saying that, uh, that her dog was put on steroids and that she's now diabetic. Um, I would really urge you to work with your veterinarian and start giving, um, raw food, either cooked or raw, and try to reverse the diabetes. Uh, there are some potential, there's, there's some medication that can also be given to uh, reverse diabetes, but it is not the topic of this discussion. So work with your veterinarian, uh, that will be the best because there will have to be periods of very intense glucose monitoring to make sure that your dog will not become hypoglycemic. Um, that is not an easy thing to do. But I always strive for reversing diabetes, especially if your dog is younger. Now, your dog is 10 years, a lab, it may or may not be possible. But I have seen dietary measures reversing dogs really well. Um, um, you want us to give you the name of the pharmacy where to get uh, Arnica. Uh, it's Helios Pharmacy from the UK, Hahnemann Pharmacy from um, the US and also um, Boron, uh, which is, uh, I think, Canadian company. Are there mobility exercises that uh, you can do uh, for preventing injuries? Uh, we have a course, mobility health and logic, sorry, uh, mobility course with my colleague, Dr. Megan Kelly, and uh, there are some exercises there. Um, we will be building a library of videos and exercises as, we, as time progresses as well. But right now, the course is the only resource that we have on, this, on the site. And we have, um, uh, we have uh, last two questions. Um, Renee David is asking questions. Um, Tamara, do you have um, do you have that question there? That's the second last. And if you cannot navigate through that uh, chat, I I know that there may be a technical problem. No no issue at all. We'll yeah, I'm it. having issues um, seeing the comments right now, Peter. No worries, it's all good. It's all good. Um, Renee David has um, has a question. Aliyah, if you can read that. You bet. Um, should we massage our pup after heavy exercise? My three-year-old golden doodle injured his front paw and had stitches and it seems stiffer compared to his other one. Any suggestions? Ooh, um, you know, uh, there's a whole slew of things that, that may, uh, issues that may have come up. Um, it should not be a stiffer paw, like if, you know, if it's all healed, um, massage is definitely one way to go. But I would also ask when asked the question of the possibility 
of some sort of uh, misalignment or muscle tightness of imbalance in the spinal area or how your dog walks now. And when there is a tightness, let's say your dog was limping on one leg and then uh, that strained the muscles, create an imbalance and that imbalance is still there. As a result, there could be decreased energy flow in the spinal area which leads to low blood perfusion, low nerve flow, and that can actually make, make that paw a little more prone to stiffness, lack of regeneration, and um, the symptoms that you see. So I would definitely talk to someone who does um, physio, chiro, talk to a few people. Um, I sometimes go to physio and chiro at the same time, just because they have different approach or acupuncturist. Um, it really depends on the resources you have available in your area. And last question. I think we've been on, online for quite some time. So uh, I'll give you guys a break. <laughs> sure thing. The last question is from Becky. How often should Cairo adjustments be made to help prevent injuries? My vet says as needed, and he's currently getting a series for his current limp, but I want to prevent injuries in the first place. My pup is crazy and loves running and being a maniac. And I'm worried this is going to cause issues as he gets older. Yeah, you know, I would say young dogs, uh, once every one to three months, depending on how injury prone they are, medium or middle aged dogs, uh, somewhere around once a month and older dogs, even more than once a month and really depends. Um, I don't really, you know, I've seen different chiropractors, different physiotherapists, massage therapists, most of them are very helpful. I've seen some of them that are not as careful or don't understand the impact that, that their treatments have on their dogs or on, on the patients. Um, so you have to just see if the results are not delivered, find someone else. If the results are good, great. Um, be mindful, observe how gentle uh, the chiropractor is. Um, I like subtle work. I find that dogs are very sensitive to physio chiropractor, chiropractics, uh, acupuncture. It is much better to be gentler than uh, try to force things. When I, and it also stems from how I respond and react. Like I have a very sensitive body. If I, uh, if I have rough adjustments that are forceful, they're not as good as the gentle ones. And you know, the best uh, adjustments in the Cairo adjustments that I've had in my lifetime were the ones that actually adjust uh, the cervical spine, but in a very gentle way where the chiropractor assessed um, my neck and there was a misalignment. I was hit by car a few times, um, fell from horses, like a few different things as a child and an adult. Um, I had a misalignment and he just measured my skull and neck angles and put me on a little prop and let me cook for half an hour. And it was amazing. So I, I used that kind of chiropractor, chiropractor who is very gentle and mindful. Um, so yeah, you know, see what works and then go from there. Anyway, thank you so much for to everyone. Thank you for watching and trying to learn. Thank you Tamara and Leah for helping me to sort the questions and helping me to keep the system up the whole time. Uh, don't forget to register for uh, the study. Um, I can't give you time frame yet, but we're trying to collect the contacts and information and see whether we can start something relatively soon. And don't forget to subscribe um, at our website at peterdobias.com. And thank you to all of you who actually trust our products and trust the information because thanks to you, we can provide the free, the free information to everyone else. Visit peterdebias.com and uh, we'll be back. Thank you and give your dog a hug for me. Bye-bye.